Uh, so, uh, uh, over the course of the last 37 lectures, we have basically seen, uh, you know, uh, how to work with MOS transistors. And uh, as you can very well imagine, there are other possible devices which also are capable of amplification. And uh, like we discussed in the early part of this course, uh, uh, those devices also exhibit basically uh, very similar characteristics. Uh, so, here is an example of another device uh, that exhibits uh, similar kind of characteristics. Uh, and you know, I would like to draw your attention to the similarity with respect to uh, the MOSFET. So, uh, in the MOSFET, this is the gate, uh, this is the drain and this is the source uh, and this is uh, the drain current I D, uh, the gate current I G was 0 and therefore, the drain current and the source current are equal. Now, uh, in the bipolar transistor, uh, this terminal is called the base, uh, this is called the emitter and this is called the collector and uh, uh, the uh, collector current uh, is obviously I C and uh, the collector current is related to the base emitter voltage as I S exponential V B E by V T minus 1 right and uh, where V T in the bipolar case is uh, the thermal voltage K T over Q, it is not to be confused with the threshold voltage of the of the MOSFET. Okay. And uh, so, uh, for sufficiently large V B, I mean so, for V B in excess of a few V T, we see that this is approximately I S e to the V B e over V T. Hmm. Okay. Now, how this uh, equation comes about is uh, you know again left to uh, uh, the device physics guys. So, they basically uh, uh, you know look into the device and then uh, do uh, all sorts of fun stuff and finally, come up with th these equations and these are all that uh, these equations are all that we are concerned about correct. And uh, so, uh, the uh, unfortunately, it turns out uh, that uh, uh, the base current uh, which is analogous to the gate current in the MOS transistor is not 0. Uh, it just turns out that I B is some I C over beta all right. And uh, so, if you now think of uh, I mean the, all this is provided the transistor operates in the active region. And again, we need to go back to device physics to figure out what you know uh, the limits of the active region. But we know that the characteristics, that is, if you plot IC versus VCE, the output characteristics in the case of uh, the bipolar transistor, uh, this is called the NPN transistor, analogous to the NMOS transistor, and the output characteristics are IC versus VCE, right? All right. And uh, uh, so, you can plot them for different values of V B. And uh, it just so turns out just turns out uh, that uh, the minimum V C E is uh, uh, is about 0.65 volts okay all right and uh, the base emitter voltage and again just like a diode if you have uh, a transistor operating in the active region uh, the ba nominal base emitter voltage is also about 0.65 volts 
okay, just like a forward biased uh, uh, diode and uh, uh, so as long as the, uh, the uh, this, so this is the this region here is the active region and rather unfortunately this region is called this region is called saturation okay because in this case it's got to do with some uh, some connotation with what happens in the device uh, so uh, but i mean this can be a bit confusing right in a mos transistor you want to operate uh, in the saturation region uh, which is the act which corresponds to the active region of operation for the mosfet uh, but you know uh, that's basically not where you want to operate saturation is not the region you want to operate when uh, you're working with a bipolar transistor okay and uh, okay so uh, now that uh, uh, we have done this uh, the next thing to do is basically figure out uh, uh, what the uh, these are the device equations the next thing to do is figure out what the small signal models for the for the transistor are and uh, 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 again once you ensure that the transistor is operating in in the active region uh, uh, we the uh, as usual we will uh, uh, go and figure out what the incremental y matrix is what is the in incremental uh, y matrix y uh, 2 1 which is the change in the collector current due to a change in the base emitter voltage. Now, earlier it was I d do change in I d versus due to a change in the V g s. Now, it is you know it is just a change uh, terminal names. So, basically uh, change in the collector current due to change in the base emitter voltage and uh, uh, that basically as you can see uh, is uh, uh, I s uh, uh, d by v b e of i c which is uh, e to the v b by v t and that is simply i c over v t. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know the nice thing about this is that regardless of the saturation current I s. Uh, the the um, the transconductance of the device is simply I C over V T, where V T is the thermal voltage. Uh, there is no you know square root mu and C ox, all that complicated stuff is not there anymore. Uh, that way, calculation of the uh, the transconductance is uh, is very simple. Hmm? Uh, what about Y two two? The change in I C due to a change in V C E, right? And uh, uh, in the active region, the current does not depend on the collector emitter voltage. So, this basically is 0, hmm. all right. Now, uh, the base current, uh, so uh, is the collector current by by beta typically beta is you know very large meaning you know uh, in a hundred or a few hundreds uh, okay and therefore this i mean admittedly this base current you know is small uh, ideally it's supposed to be a very very tiny fraction of uh, of the uh, uh, collector current so so if this is ic this is ic by beta uh, what is uh, uh, the emitter current I mean simply by uh, if you draw a node around uh, uh, a surface around these three terminals the net current coming in must be equal to the net current going out. So, this must be I c plus I c by 
beta. So, uh, the ratio that the emitter current therefore, is nothing but I c times uh, beta plus 1 by beta and uh, so often times uh, rather than quote beta which is a uh, large number manufacturers quote I c by I e which is beta by beta plus 1 and this is uh, defined to be alpha. So, this alpha is a number close to 1 and it is telling you how much of the collector current is uh, 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 I mean how much of the emitter current is uh, is lost in the base. Okay. Now, uh, with this uh, what is uh, uh, y 1 1 is do I B by dou V B E right and which is uh, 1 over beta times dou I C by dou V B E which is G M. So, by the way uh, as usual this is called the transconductance of the transistor G M. So, this is nothing but G m by beta. Does it make sense? Okay. So, and uh, uh, y 1 2 again the base current uh, does not depend on the, the collector emitter voltage right and therefore, y 1 2 is 0. Hmm. So, the small signal equivalent of the MOS of the bipolar transistor therefore, you can see is y 1 1 which is basically now a resistor of value beta over g m and uh, there is this is g m v b e. 